I've been playing around a little bit with sublimation lately and I wanted to see if I can break some of the typical sublimation rules. I wanted to see if I could sublimate on a dark colored sweatshirt with only a 40% polyester count. If you're new here, my name is Nisha. Welcome to Little Craft Nest. So normally when you're doing sublimation, you want to make sure that your substrate or your crafting blank has a high polyester count. Typically, the higher the polyester count, the clearer the image you're going to get. You also want to use light colors and preferably white so you can see those vibrant colors pop. But recently I picked up a dark purple sweater for myself with only a 40% polyester count. So I'm going to show you how this turned out. For this project, I decided it'd probably be best to use black ink. Because sublimation ink is translucent, meaning you can see through the ink. So whatever color you're putting that ink on top of, it's kind of going to blend the color of your substrate and the ink together. So for example, if you were to put red ink on a yellow sweater, your color may appear to be a little orangey. The color won't appear on your project as it appears on your computer screen. And that's why we often use white substrate. So I saved my design on Canva and printed it out on my Epson SureColor F150 and I also use Epson sublimation paper. One of the tricks I learned when sublimating textiles, you can tear the edge around your sublimation design and that's going to soften that indent that you often get when pressing with your heat press down on your sublimation paper. I used a lint roller to remove any lint from the sweater and then I pressed it in my heat press for about five seconds to remove any of the moisture and wrinkles in the shirt. I decided to set my heat press at 375 and press for 65 seconds. Now 375 is a lower temperature than I usually use for sublimation, but because I only had a 40% polyester count and 60% cotton, I didn't want to heat up my shirt so much that the cotton in my shirt might burn, so I kind of erred on the side of caution. I put a piece of butcher paper inside my sweater, and then I laid my design on top, and I used a measuring tape to make sure I was putting my design on straight. I grabbed some heat transfer tape to make sure that my design doesn't move while it's being pressed, and then I laid another sheet of butcher paper on top. And then I cross my fingers as I press my design, hoping that it would work. My thought process was, if this doesn't work at all, I will just put some heat transfer vinyl on top of the sweater. And here's the moment of truth. Let's see how this project turned out. Now it looks like it turned out pretty good. The black isn't quite as black as I was hoping for. It looks more like a dark purple, almost a faded black, but that's perfectly fine because after all, this sweater does say vintage on it. But I'm really curious to see how this sweater is gonna wash, so I'm gonna wait 24 hours and then throw it in the wash, and then I'll come back and show you the results. I washed my sweater inside out in cold water and I didn't use any fabric softener and then I let it tumble dry. The design still looks amazing but I feel like it might be just slightly lighter than it was before. But I'm still really happy with the results and hopefully the design holds up. Here is the before on the left and after I washed it on the right. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give us a thumbs up and I hope to see you on more crafting adventures.